power, and energy are located throughout the facility and exist in many different forms, including electric, pneumatic, hydraulic, chemical, mechanical, and thermal. If energy is not controlled, it can present serious health and safety hazards. Consider these alarming statistics. OSHA has determined that in the United States alone, preventable workplace accidents involving uncontrolled energy sources result in 50,000 injuries and claim 120 lives each year. When it's time to maintain or service machines, equipment, or infrastructure, proper safety procedures require energy to be locked out or otherwise controlled before work can begin. To help maintain safety in the workplace, OSHA and other worldwide health and safety organizations provide rules and guidelines that help companies develop a total energy control program. Compliance with lockout tagout standards is required by law and enforced by OSHA. The good news is that you hold the key to safety in your company. By using a lockout tagout energy control program, you can help prevent workplace accidents and injuries, both to yourself and to other workers. So, what is Lockout Tagout and when should you use it? Lockout Tagout is a complete program used to control hazardous energy during the servicing or maintenance of machines and equipment when the unexpected startup of the equipment or the release of stored energy could cause injuries to employees. Service and maintenance includes the following activities installation, replacement, modification, inspection, lubrication, cleaning, and more. The following four elements make up a complete lockout tagout energy control program energy control procedures, employee training, lockout tagout hardware, and periodic internal inspections. Element 1 Energy Control Procedures Documentation is key to an effective lockout tagout program. Written procedures must be developed that identify the information that all employees need to know in order to control potentially hazardous energy during servicing or maintenance. This energy control procedure must outline the scope, purpose, authorization, rules, and techniques that will be used to control hazardous energy sources, as well as the means that will be used to enforce compliance. This documentation should contain a statement of how the procedure will be used, the steps required for safe shutdown, including how to isolate, lock, and secure machines and equipment, the procedure for removing and storing lockout tagout devices with a clear designation of the personnel responsible for these tasks and clear requirements for testing and verification of lock and tag effectiveness. It is important these procedures are machine specific and clearly identify all energy sources. Element 2. Certified Training Companies must certify that training or retraining on lockout tagout procedures is provided to all employees covered by OSHA Standard 1910.147. The certification program must include keeping up-to-date records of employees and their training dates. Training must take place anytime there is a change in job assignment, change in the energy control procedures, or if an inspection reveals the need for retraining. The degree of training required is determined by the work responsibilities of each employee, who are then placed into one of several categories, authorized employees, affected employees, and other. Authorized employees are responsible for implementing energy control procedures and performing the required servicing or maintenance. Training for authorized employees includes details about the type and magnitude of the hazardous energy sources present at the facility and the methods for isolating and controlling these energy sources. Authorized employees must also receive training on machine-specific procedures. Affected employees, on the other hand, simply perform their duties in the area in which an energy control procedure is being implemented. Affected employees are not themselves responsible for locking and tagging out, and they are not authorized to do so. The final designation is other employees. These workers include office or warehouse personnel who may work in an area where an energy control procedure is utilized. The responsibilities of affected and other employees are to recognize when energy control procedures are being implemented and to understand the purpose of these procedures. They must not attempt to start up or use equipment that has been locked or tagged out and must relay all such requests to the authorized employee on duty. Element 3. Tags and Lockout Devices Many types of lockout tagout products are available to help control energy and enhance worker safety. Specific OSHA requirements govern the use of these devices. 
Tags and lockout devices must be used only for the specific lockout tagout application. Both tags and locks must be standardized by color, shape, or size. Tags must conform to a standard print size or format. They are also required to be durable enough to withstand the environment to which they are exposed for the maximum duration of the expected exposure. Finally, tags and locks must be identifiable and must clearly identify the employee who applies them. Locks and lockout devices must be substantial enough to prevent removal except by excessive force with special tools such as bolt cutters or other metal cutting tools. If you lose your key, your supervisor should be alerted immediately. Tags must warn against any anticipated hazard. Tag tie must be attachable by hand, self-locking and non-reusable, with a minimum locking strength of no less than 50 pounds. Element 4. Inspection Each employer must ensure personnel understand and comply with all relevant and applicable energy control program regulations. Periodic inspection of each lockout tagout procedures must be performed at least once a year by an authorized employee other than the one utilizing the energy control procedure under inspection. These inspections are designed to ensure that energy control procedures are still adequate, continue to be properly implemented, and that employees are familiar with their responsibilities under these procedures. The documentation of the periodic inspections must make note of the machine that is locked and tagged out, the inspection date, the employee responsible for locking and tagging out, and the inspector. When a lockout procedure is inspected, the inspector must review the responsibilities of each authorized employee, ensuring that they understand and can properly implement all steps in the procedure. If it is revealed that there are deviations or inadequacies in the employee's knowledge or use of the energy control procedures, retraining should be conducted. Now let's take a look at some example lockout tagout practices. The procedures for shutdown and startup should be straightforward. When equipment must be shut down for maintenance or repair, make sure you understand the type and magnitude of the energy, the hazards to be controlled, and the methods or means to control the energy before attempting to shut it down. After you prepare for the shutdown and announce the shutdown to all affected employees, turn off the equipment using normal stopping procedures. Then disconnect the power source or sources to isolate the equipment. In the case of electrically powered machines, this means taking action at the disconnect or breaker that feeds the machine. Do not rely on just the push button or on-off switch. Always disconnect the energy source after turning the machine off. If you disconnect the machine under load, you risk damaging the equipment. Take the time to make sure you have isolated the equipment from all energy sources. Many machines have more than one source of power. After you've turned off the equipment and isolated it from the power source, test to make sure the equipment is isolated by trying the on-off controls or using test instruments. Remember to leave these controls in the off or neutral position. The next step is to properly lock out machinery to ensure that energy is not restored while you are working on the equipment. Locking out a machine involves more than just turning it off. A lock must be applied to all on-off switches and controls to physically prevent access to them. Use only your own lock to lock out the equipment you are working on. And remember, locks used for lockouts should be used only for lockouts. Don't use lockout locks on tool chests, lockers, or cabinets. Use them only for lockouts. Then, tag out the equipment to provide a visual alert that work is being performed. Start by using a secure tie to place your tag at the disconnect point. Finish by signing your name and writing down the date and the type of work you are doing. Occasionally, it is physically impossible to use a lock to lock out a piece of equipment. In those cases, it is absolutely essential to follow tag out procedures. That tag may be the only thing between you and serious injury. Keep in mind that no matter how good the tag is, a tag can never substitute for a lock. It's a visual warning, but it doesn't provide vital physical protection. These procedures may appear to be excessively cautious, but when a life is on the line, there is no point in taking chances. After you've affixed the necessary lockout tagout devices, release stored energy and bring the equipment to a zero mechanical state. Now, even though you have locked the levers, valves, or switches in place, check them again and verify that all sources of energy are isolated by testing if necessary. Make sure no one is able to put them back in the on position. Retest all on-off controls and leave them in the off or neutral position. When the machinery is completely de-energized and when all movement has stopped, it's safe for you to go to work. Let's quickly review all shutdown steps again. 
One, after you've prepared for the shutdown, announce the shutdown to all infected employees. Two, turn off the equipment using normal stopping procedures. Three, disconnect the energy source or sources to isolate the machine or equipment. Four, lock out and or tag out the energy sources to ensure that energy will not be restored. Five, release all residual energy. Six, verify isolation of all energy sources. It is now safe to begin maintenance or service on the equipment. Startup is every bit as important as shutdown. When the work is completed, follow procedures for restoring the equipment to running conditions. First, make sure you remove all tools, reconnect any lines, and put machine guards back in place. Before you remove the lock and tag and re-energize the equipment, announce that the equipment is being turned on again and confirm that all employees are safely positioned. Lockout tagout devices can now be removed by the employee who applied them. If you are the last one to unlock, notify the area supervisor before restoring energy. When the work is done and all locks and tags are removed, restore energy to the equipment. Finally, it's a good idea to ask the responsible operator to test run the equipment to make sure it's operating correctly before you leave. When multiple people need to perform servicing or maintenance, group lockout tagout procedures should be used. Group lockout tagout should give all employees the same level of protection as using personal lockout tagout. A principal authorized employee should be assigned to oversee the lockout activities of the group of workers. If multiple crews are involved, each group should have a principal authorized employee. Another authorized employee should be assigned overall lockout tagout responsibility to coordinate the procedure. During the procedures, each authorized employee must place their own lockout or tagout device on the group lockout device, such as a HASP or group lockbox. They must also remove their own device after the service or maintenance is completed. When your shift is over, take your lock with you after the next shift arrives. Continuity is critical. Let the new shift snap their locks into place before you remove your own lock. When outside contractors are working at your facility, your company and the outside contractor must communicate to each other the details of lockout tagout procedures used by both companies. Your company must ensure that its employees understand and comply with the restrictions and prohibitions of the contractor's energy control procedures. If the authorized employee who applied a lockout tagout device is not available, the employer must take the following steps before removing the device. Verify that the authorized employee is not in the facility. Make all reasonable efforts to contact the authorized employee and inform him or her that the device was removed and ensure that the authorized employee is aware that the device was removed before he or she resumes work. If lockout or tagout devices must be temporarily removed for testing or positioning of the machine, the regular startup and shutdown procedures must be used to re-energize and de-energize the equipment or machinery. Lockout tagout is a key part of a complete and effective safety program, but do not forget about other components of a safety program, such as PPE or safety signage, for example. Effective lockout tagout procedures manage workplace risks by controlling the release of hazardous energies during equipment maintenance and servicing. Also, while employee safety is a top priority, establishing a comprehensive lockout tagout program protects a company from legal and financial risks and is well worth the investment. Locking out and tagging out small steps we all must take when a life is on the line.